Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Suresh Prabhu, the Railway Minister joining us right here on ET Now. We're speaking in market hours and it is only fair that I begin talking to you about the proposed listing of rail PSUs. Three of them on the cards, Aircon, IRCTC and IRFC uh, to be listed. How do you expect these uh, to go on? Uh, what, is, what are the timelines you're looking at? What kind of equity divestment is the government talking about at this stage? This announcement was made in the previous budget by me also. So we are already started working on it. We are already prepared. We have already some of the PSUs. We already started the valuation exercise. We already told him to prepare a proper corporate plan, which is already the work in progress. This year, when our honourable finance minister announced it again in the budget speech, we have already taken this to step forward, and we are in the very advanced stage of preparing everything that is necessary to list the PSUs on the stock exchanges. All right, so listing, yes, but sir, I, I want to get down to the specifics. What kind of equity divestment is the government willing to offer at this stage? Uh, what are the plans? I mean, how much money are you looking to raise? And, and more specifically, where will that fund really be deployed? No, no, sir, this is very difficult to say today. This will be part of a prospectus where the funds are going to be utilized. This will be uh, how much money will be raised will be de decided from time to time depending upon the market condition as well as the timing of the issue. But as I am saying, we are already preparing everything that is necessary for a listing to take place. All right, so you're preparing things to take the place. But, you know, you have in the past said that Indian Railways could encapsulate its PSUs into a holding company. Where are plans on that? Will you be approaching cabinet soon? Because one was given to understand there was some difference of opinion on that holding company. Uh, will you help elaborate on that particular issue? See, this is a completely independent of the listing issue. Because holding company, who holds the companies is something which has to be decided separately. But listing is an independent issue because, for example, there are large groups in India, like Tata Group, they may be having holding company, doesn't mean the companies, the subsidiaries of the holding company are not listed. So listing is a separate issue independent of the holding company issue. All right, that's an important clarification because many people thought one was hinged on the other. But Mr. Prabhu, reports do suggest that several parts of the department within the railways, some unions are unhappy to list these entities. Uh, I want to ask you, what are you doing about that? And is the railway ministry fully on board with the proposal to list all its PSUs? You know, we are always on the board. Railway is an integral part of the government of India. So Finance Ministry and the Railway Ministry, Mr. Arun Jetli and Suresh Prabhu, we talk to each other very regularly and we take collective decision. We are completely on the same page as far as making the railways far better than what it is today. The Prime Minister is leading the entire idea of revamping the railway infrastructure to make it best in the world. So we are all working in tandem with each other. I also want to talk to you about something that markets and, and some investors are concerned about, which is removal of service charge, and that's estimated to hit IRCTC's revenues pretty substantially. Do you see that as a negative because IRCTC is one of your listing candidates? You know, as I said, you know, these are all the issues which will be taken in consultation with the market players and to understand how the market perceives it. But as I said, independent of this, irrespective of this, Quite early in the day, we have been working on making the business plan for each of these entities to make sure that they will be able to elicit a lot of interest from the market as well as this benefit. The, it will benefit the entities itself. It will benefit the government of India. It will be benefit the public finances as well as it will benefit the investor as a whole. So this whole idea is to align everybody's interest into one. So when you say align interest, do you also have a longer term plan to raise capital? Because there is going to be capital requirement for the railways. Do you have a longer term plan to raise capital by listing other rail entities and which ones uh, would perhaps be on your mind or, or, or top of mind recall at this stage? See, right now we'll just confine to what we already decided. But to put into perspective that the railways used to get about capex of not more than 30, 40,000 crores a year which first year we made it 1 lakh crore, last year 1 lakh 11,000 crore, and this year finance minister said 1 lakh 31,000 crores. So out of 1 lakh 31,000 crores, 55,000 crore years said will come from the GBS, as has been the trend in the first two years also. Only part of that was, small part of that was coming from the gross budgetary support. The balance we are raising on our own. 
So how much we have raised in the last two and a half years? Three lakh fifty thousand crores for the railways. This is in addition to the money that is the capex that is going on into the new contract that have been given to G and Alstom. That is forty thousand crores. The station development program, which is also a major capex program, dedicated freight corridor, which is eighty-five thousand crore program, which is a, another capex program. The port connectivity project, which are the PPP projects, the projects which are going on in terms of uh, private freight terminal, which are the private, uh, which are the PPP project. Then there is a private siding, which are again the private sector participation project. So you can imagine the amount of capital expenditure that is going into the railways from one from the budget, another one from the extra budget resources, third from the private public partnership, and this is a phenomenal increase in what the railways has been doing in the last several decades. So just imagine the quantum jump, the entire paradigm shift into the way we are looked at railways. The railway has always suffered from underinvestment. Today, the railway is completely changing the cycle from the vicious cycle of underinvestment. That's why no investment, no investment. Therefore, no revenues. The revenue is going down. The railway is suffering, losing customers, losing market share. From there, we are making it virtuous by making investment. Of course, the full result of that only will be felt only when we complete the first cycle of investment. That will be five years. But just imagine the benefit of that. Every rupee that we invest into the railway's infrastructure. The economy as a whole is going to get six times more benefit from that. So all of this is happening, and therefore we'll definitely do it. The part of the financing raise will happen through the PSU listing, but that is not only where we are depending on. As I can explain to you, we are already working on quite a few other ideas, and therefore funding is not an issue. We have met ten states who agreed to make joint venture with the railways. That will be another several tens of thousands of crores that will come into the place. And those projects also will add to the capex. So, can you imagine the amount of activity and the capex that is happening to create infrastructure in the railways? Only thing is that you know you don't announce it and then it happens overnight. It takes time for it to materialize. Okay, I, I get your point about how it's happening uh, in a more dynamic way now, and you are perhaps. But because you mentioned capital expenditure, we need to switch gears and talk about the need that railways has for a substantial amount of capital. And while I know 1.31 lakh crore in capital allocation has gone to the railways, many would consider this is insufficient for for the kind of capacity expansion that you're speaking about. Will you be tapping additional funds by a borrowing this year, uh, as far as filling the gaps is concerned? And by this year, I really mean the next fiscal. You know, as I said, we normally, when you decide the capex, this is dependent on two things. One is the requirement of the railways. See, railway has suffered because of lack of underinvestment, as I said earlier. So, if we don't put that money, the safety is compromised. The efficiency of the railway is not improved. The operating capacity of the railways to get more revenues, to get ability of getting more customers, gets down. Modernization suffers. The ability of the railways to be as efficient as the other sectors of the economy and the rest of the world is there also takes a toll. So, keeping all this in mind, we are trying to keep the capex requirement as well as the ability of the railways to spend the money. Can you imagine the same railway organisation which should spend 30, 40 thousand crore has already spent more than one lakh crore this year, and they will be spending more than one lakh crore this year, and in the three years together they will spend three lakh fifty thousand crore. Can you imagine the amount of capacity building that must happen in the railway system? And this is in addition to the other activities that are going on, like station redevelopment. It has never happened in the railways before. Electrification. What we are going to do? We are doubling the electrification in the next five years than what we have done in the last several decades. Just imagine the quantum jump that is taking place and the volume that we are handling. And the same organization which we are doing before is trying to undertake something like this. So can you imagine the capacity building that must happen within the organization to make this happen? And all of this is through e-tendering. We are trying to make the entire process transparent. All the tenders, not a single rupee tender comes to the minister. It all done at the level of general managers. We are trying to make employer general managers, try to make them so all of this capacity building. So I can see a huge benefit to the railways over a period of time. Thanks to the capacity building that is taking place today, the experience that they are gathering, the amount of their ability to deliver, this is increasing substantially. So I think this has been a great, great uh, achievement. We'll really need to do more and we'll do more because I'm not any time happy doing something as small as this because our Prime Minister's desire is to make India a developed nation. And if the India has to be a developed nation, each sector must contribute. 
Railways will play a significant role into doing that. That's why we are gearing up. Mr. Prabhu, I do want to ask you a question about privatization because it's been such a taboo word. But with your promises of opening up investments that you just spoke about, how open is the railways at this stage to the possibility of private players entering railways as operators of freight and passenger traffic? I mean, I know it's a controversial question, but I do seek an answer from you. Please give me a model. I will be very happy to work on just give me a model. So let us understand the model, how it can work when you are yourself agreeing that private investment generally into the economy is not coming up because private sector are not willing to take risks, they are not trying to put in more money. So in that context, please suggest to me a model wherein more private sectors can come and how they can take part, we'll definitely look into that. All right. The budget also did talk about fixing tariffs in line with several factors, and I think that was very emphatic. It was in the fine print as well. Should one be reading between those lines, and, and should passengers and freight be ready for another fare hike in the upcoming fiscal year? So therefore, as I said, you please let us, we are looking at many issues. I don't want to give you a general answer to a specific issue that we are dealing with. We are definitely, as I said, open to ideas. So anybody can give ideas and we'll definitely work on that. But point I'm saying is that the whole idea is that we must rework the network and try to invest money into the sectors where the private sector is shy of doing it today. Once we create an efficient infrastructure, this will be always possible for more and more ideas to come into play. There are so many more questions to ask of you, but I'm going to let you go after this one. The finance minister did flag off the stiff competition that railways has from private sector players, especially the airlines in his budget speech. And the reality is, empirical data seems to suggest more people have taken to flying uh, than additions made in second tier uh, AC. Uh, of course, sometimes fares are higher in uh, three AC than some airfares. Uh, how do you plan to keep railways a viable long-term solution for passengers? I'm not there for the Elaichi chai or the meal that you're offering. I want to fly on, I want to train on time, which is not happening. And I also want it to be a viable cost option. This is precisely the point why we are embarked upon a complete revamping of the railway organization. One, over the last several decades, we have underinvested railways, so therefore the roads have benefited from railways. Now there is an airline which is also benefiting from loss of railway share because they are starting low, low budget airlines. So rail and both are private. The ports, the, the, the roads, as well as the airports, the airline business, the aviation, as well as road sector is more or less private. Railway being in the government, our ability to change. So we are trying to work within the most difficult constraints and still operating, trying to make it in a better manner. So the entire strategy is to revamp the railway organization to make it efficient, to make it better, to make it technologically savvy. We are got talked to all the countries, Germany, France, Italy, Japan, Korea. They are the countries which are actually tied up with us for technology upgradation. We are trying to get the best of the technology in the world. The French are working on some corridors, Japanese are working on some other corridors, so we are trying to rework the entire thing. So I think really we are trying to work on it. I need to leave, but I would really appreciate that we, we will work together. ET now is a very important channel, so we will definitely work together. So thank you very, very much for all this, and we will definitely continue this dialogue so that we work as a team to make sure that India develops along with the railways. Indeed. And on that note, sir, thank you very much for joining us right here on ET Now and speaking to us about the plans that Indian Railways has, uh, three big ticket listings. We do hope the markets will have the appetite for all three of them. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash ET Now and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at ET Now Live. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash ET Now.